Oh, yeah. These card problems. All right. Um, fine. Okay. So this is the uh, this is the YouTube channel um, that. Um, actually, what I'll do is I'll call it up on my screen simultaneously, so I can. You guys seeing a gray screen over there, by the way? Yeah, Glenn, you lost us again. Did you try to go back into presentation mode? Uh, no, I'm looking at it on my end. Um, okay, right. yeah, no, you're back. Just keep doing okay, whatever it is anyway. you're doing right now. Okay, sounds good. All right. So um, we're on slide two. Um, so this is a YouTube channel called The Trading Channel, or TTC for short. And um, this is operated by a gentleman named... Um, named uh, Stephen Hart and um, he does a lot of Forex trading which I, I think is um, you know a, 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 as good a place to start as any um, obviously the um, the margins and volatility that um, he's going to be trading is um, tempered quite considerably compared to what we're used to in crypto but that's fine um, in a way that's actually going to demonstrate one of the strengths of carbon because um, we're not limited to tick ranges we can actually use um, very very small changes in in price in order to execute a trade um, whereas other um, concentrated liquidity protocols um, especially ones that are using preset tick ranges might struggle to trade um, those kinds of low volatility events um, glenn you want to go to slide three for me sure and there now. what we're gonna, see. yep. Good. And um, this this is just a screen cap of you know some of the the types of videos that um, that, uh, that this channel is known for, and the one that I put asterisks around here, which is master these simple reversal entries to become a top five percent trader, and three must know entries for all traders in parentheses. So this has got about um, half a million views. It was posted about um, two years ago. And it's um, from this video um, that I've taken um, essentially the the prompts, and um, I've waited for um, waited for for Stephen to describe his um, his trading strategy. So uh, Glenn, go to slide four for me. Yeah, and so you'll see here um, that this is you know a, a part during the the video. Um, where he has identified, you know, some chart pattern that that he um, is is comfortable trading, right? And he's got some some strategy that he wants to use. Um, if we go to slide five, you'll see that all I've done is superimpose um, arrows over the top of this, and you'll see these kinds of um, you know these kinds of depictions of of um, of, of chart behavior relatively frequently. Um, if you go to uh, slide six. Um, you'll see that it's just called a double top, okay? And so uh, if you've watched the video, and I, I strongly recommend that you do, um, you'll hear him say that this is, you know, he waited for confirmation, and this is the sort of, um, you know, the sort of pattern that he's used to trading. And this is, you know, one of the, the five strategies or something in this video that um, he's trying to uh, educate his, his user base on. Um, on slide seven... You'll see that he's um, added these these boxes, right? There's a a new red box and a new green box um, just to the side of where the the current price action is. And on slide eight, um, I've added the um, the uh, the term that he used, which is entry tool. <clears throat> and this is, I, I guess, something that is um, you know a, a plugin for uh, for trading view. And is you know um, d designed to help identify um, specific ranges that um, the the price action is likely to to follow, and it's these kinds of prompts that traders are using um, in order to execute their strategy. On slide nine, all I've done is um, replace or superimpose rather over the top of these boxes um, some um, you know some broken arrows, which is sort of meant to represent his expectation of what is going to happen to the price. So you can see that, you know, from this double top, he's expecting some sort of reversal, right? So some um, retracement um, back down to um, to lower lows compared to where to compared to the most recent low, um, followed by then a um, a reversal to the upside um, to find a, a, a new local high. Um, I have uh, drawn black squares around um you know uh, around parts of this chart um and you know it's unfortunate that i wasn't able to present this myself because i've actually animated this um but these black squares were going to basically transform into um into carbon orders on slide 10 
um, you can see that this is very, very simple, right? The, the, the box at the bottom is essentially the price range that, um, that the trader is hoping to buy in. And then the, the box at the top is the range that the trader is hoping to sell in. Now, the most important thing that I want you to realize from these two boxes is that there is some level of uncertainty as to how low or how high the price is likely to go. And so, um, the, it's, it's very, very common that when trading something like this, that rather than set a single execution price, the trade will set many. And, um, you know, this has some overhead associated with it, especially with re just respect to managing the complexity of it. Um, but you can imagine that, you know, and these are very, very small changes in price to set um, a, you know, a, a collection of limit orders all the way down here is, um, you know, it, it has complications associated with it. Um, and you have to, um, you know, you have to manage those positions actively, especially um, if they're being actively taken. Um, the, um, you know, your, um, you, your Forex account is going to be receiving the other currency and you then are going to have to do something, um, with that currency in order to set up limit orders on the other side. Um, of course it's very common to just trade this with a perpetual swap or with options. Um, but for the sake of simplicity and, you know, recognizing that at some level, um, all of this trading with the, um, with the underlying asset has to occur somewhere and that this is the um, predominant um, infrastructure that's being built into DeFi, um, we're going to assume that it's the underlying asset being traded and not some, um, you know, what, not some derivative. On slide 11. Did we lose Mark? Or is it just me? Zybulls. You can see that. Yeah. What's up? Okay, you're back. Sorry. Good. Oh. Um, so what I've done on this slide is I've added... Um, uh, I've added the the specific price ranges, right? Or they the actually the, the specific price intervals, um, and I've just taken these um, these prompts directly from the the trading view screenshot. Um, so you know, Stephen doesn't say explicitly how he how he's going to trade this, but the the you know his intent is perfectly clear. And if you watch the video, I think you'll agree with my interpretation. Um, one thing to note here is how many decimal places are required to trade this, right? Because this is just looking at the US dollar versus the euro, and we're looking on a, a daily time, like a, a you know a day to day time frame. Um, we're really looking for for changes in like the the, the fourth and fifth decimal place in some cases. Um, so you know this is a you need to have a, a highly precise. Um, uh, you know, a highly precise machine capable of, of processing, um, you know, tr trades with that level of precision um, that is, um, th that would allow something like this to, to, to happen. Um, and again, this is um, where I think a lot of the concentrated liquidity protocols that are currently on offer are, are, are never going to be able to, um, to service um, something like this, which is a shame, right? Because Forex is, um, probably the, the, the largest single, um, you know, trading market in, in the world. Um, on slide 12, what I've done is I've just kind of broken up these boxes, um, and labeled them, um, according to what they're actually going to do. So you can see in the, the box on the left with the arrow that's pointing down, um, this is where you're exchanging us dollars for, for euros. And the reason you're doing that is because the, the euros are becoming discounted, right? As the market trends lower for the euro. And um, so you're, you're buying them at that range before you expect the, the reversal to hit. And so the box up to the right is when you are then exchanging euros back for US dollars and sort of completing that round trip and, and hoping to make a profit. Um and again, right? These are, are very, very small changes in price, and so the the, the profit margins on forex are generally pretty razor thin. Um, but that's okay. On slide thirteen, um, what I've done is uh, essentially move some of these numbers around and re-represented them or recreated them as if they were um, um, a carbon order. And the reason I've done this is so that you can see that there's really um, like nothing special required in order to place a carbon order. It is, um, I think, a, a very natural way to represent the trader's intent, which is, you know, which is a design choice. 
the two um, the two charts that you're seeing here or the two graphs that you're seeing in front of you um, the, the top one is simply the the bonding curve right or the, the carbons version of a bonding curve um, which has the USD balance that the trader is committing to this strategy on the um, on the y axis and then the x axis is some abstract quantity don't worry too much about that if you really want to know what the x axis represents on a carbon bonding curve you can reach out to me privately um, but for the sake of this presentation just ignore it um, the uh, the chart to the bottom <coughs> is the price curve for carbon. So this is, um, you know, in my opinion, a much more helpful way to visualize the you know the effective bonding curve, um, and it demonstrates how um, carbon can create a um, can quote a price right can can actually make markets um, with an adjustable and you know discoverable price. Um, with only using a single token balance, which is something that's unique to, to Carbon. I haven't um, encountered any other um, any other AMMs capable of, of doing that. Um, and I've put um, the 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 range, including the geometric mean um, between the the top and the bottom, um, or the the extremes of the the price that Stephen was talking about on his channel, um, uh, next to um, the the price curve, just for for clarity's sake. Um, if we go to slide 14, um, you'll see that what I'm going to do here is um, immediately... Uh, Glenn, can we go to slide 14 for me? Yeah, perfect, thank you. Um, you'll see what I've done here is I've converted the, um, the, uh, the price to the upside, which is where you're going to be, which, which is where, um, you know, the, the, the Forex trader is hoping to sell euros for dollars. Um, I've flipped the numerator on these so that these prices are now quoted in euros per dollar. Um, this is not really necessary. And certainly this is not going to be part of carbon's front end because um we're going to you know make sure that a lot of this work is done for the trader behind the scenes um but for the sake of demonstrating how these curves work and how the, um, a, a strategy is represented and executed it's important to get um each curve into its own numera um and so for that reason we've had to flip these prices around if you go to slide 15 um you can see then that i've um uh, I've taken those um, flips numera um, price targets um, and I've created the same um, bonding and price curves um, on the euro side as we did on the USD side. Importantly, and this is um, a concept that um, we're going to be revisiting, I think, a, a lot in some of our education materials um, coming up over the, you know, um, over the coming weeks, months and years. Um, and that is that this euro order is completely empty at this stage. And the reason for that is that if you're expecting the euro to drop in price, then the trader is unlikely to have any right now, or at least they're going to take as, as little exposure to the euro as they possibly can. And so it actually makes sense that when you're creating a strategy on carbon to, to trade um, you know, a reversal pattern like the one that he's identified, that only one of your orders is going to have any tokens in it. And that's by design, right? So the, the, that carbon can accommodate this type of behavior is no accident. Um, we know that, uh, you know, how traders think and feel and, and respond to things. And so being able to, to set up a, an empty order um, that has preset um, prices that it's going to be trading inside of without actually committing any tokens to it yet or without any, you know, euros in it yet in in this case um is a, is, is an important um design choice if we go to um slide 16 um you can see that this is just the summary right nothing too um, important happening on this slide um i've really just removed some of the labels to try and clarify things um and i've now labeled these things as order one and order two and um i'm going to keep that um uh, keep that designation consistent throughout the presentation and I've got big empty signs over the top of the euro order so that we can just be reminded of that slide 17 has got really nothing on it it just says a strategy is created and the reason why this slide is here is because is to remind me to tell all of you that um, this is the end of the work for the trader everything that we're going to do from this slide on um, carbon does automatically and, uh, you know, effectively gaslessly because it, it's just how the algorithm behaves. 
So, um, you know, after identifying this reversal pattern, um, if we wanted to completely recreate everything that he wrote in or everything that he wrote and said in that YouTube channel, then we've already done the work, right? We've put in the price targets. Um, and I think I've nominated just a, like a 10,000 USD balance to, to start this strategy off. Um, and then this is plug and play, right? It, after this, it just goes. Um, and so let's have a look at how this thing evolves um, on slide 18. Yeah, uh, you can see that um, after identifying this reversal pattern, the market did actually play out um, in accordance with Stephen's expectations. Um, so the, the price of the euro did in fact um, decline um, and it declined far enough that it actually hit the, the bottom price target. So this would have been a filled order. Um, and um, after it um, after it reached that bottom price target, it did um, uh, recover to the upside and also filled at least through a wick um, the the price target um, on the on the sell side. Um, so this was you know a, go a good prediction, um, an example of you know I guess successful technical analysis. Um, on slide nineteen, all I've done is add um, arrows to represent that price movement. It's not super important. Slide twenty. Um, is just reminding us that in that green box, we're exchanging US dollars for euros as the euro becomes cheaper, so we can buy it more efficiently on the way down. And then um, the green arrow is... The okay, no, 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 we lost one screen for a minute. Yeah, it's going to yeah. keep doing that. I think it's just a Discord issue. And the, yeah, the green arrow is just reminding us that when we're in the red, red box territory, that we're exchanging euros back for US dollars hoping that um, once we complete the round trip that we're uh, a little bit richer than, than how we started. Slide 21. Um, what I've done here in order to simulate what carbon is going to do is to break up this, um, this price action into sort of three segments. So you can see that there was um, a push down um, followed by a brief recovery. Um, or, you know, a, a mini rally, um, followed by another push down in a mini rally, and then a bigger push down at the end before um, rallying all the way back up. There's a couple of reasons why um, I've broken it up this way. Um, one is to stress that on carbon, it does not matter how many times the price pulls back. Um, this is in stark contrast to some other AMMs that people use for or attempt to use for this kind of trading behavior, where all of these little pullbacks were actually eat into the efficiency of your strategy, because um, you know if it didn't ha if it didn't continue capitulating further down as you had wanted, then these little rallies that that um, that um, that move up after these you know these um, these deeper, um, you know, these deeper capitulations, um, you will experience IL on that. And so on carbon, we've done away with that because of the unidirectionality of the, of the bonding curve. Um, it really doesn't make any difference um, how often it sort of has these, you know, these brief relief rallies to the upside. Um, and that's, a, that's an important distinction. So these, these three, um, you know, pushes down. I'm just going to treat these as being three like distinct trades. And if we go to slide 22, you can see that what I've done there is to add the specific price levels associated with these, um, you know, with these drawdowns. And um, the final one is when we actually hit that target at, um, at 1.09400. Okay. Uh, slide 23 can effectively be skipped. It's just showing that um, we're going to be first looking at this trade down to um, to 1.10. Okay, slide 24. It's just a reminder of what our um, you know what the the carbon order or what the carbon strategy looks like before it's done anything. And now we're going to have a look at this this trade. So in slide 25. Um, as the price um, moved down by. Um, uh, 0 0.00218 US dollars per euro. Um, th this particular strategy. Ooh. You're good, Mark. Um, okay, it says that the, the stream has ended. No, no, no. That was mine. For whatever reason, mine just picked up. And I noticed, okay. so I dropped it, but I still see Glenn. 
Okay, fine. I'll keep going. Um, okay. Um, so you'll see that, yeah, okay. Um, as the price moves down by 0 0.00218 cents, right? So this is a very, very small price movement. Um, the carbon strategy um, can sell um, for, you know, if someone takes um, the this Forex trader at the price that they're offering, um, he would have been able to sell um, 2,037 uh, US dollars and, and, and some change. On slide 26, you'll see that the um, the euros that he bought um, is actually being accumulated in what was once the empty position. So the um, you know, and this is the again a very very important difference between carbon and other AMM designs, and that is that each bonding curve is governed only by a single token balance. So when um, when these US dollars are being sold off on order one order two um that increases its balance of available euros um for selling um in the in, in its own range so we've really we've split up the system um and this is what we refer to as um asymmetric liquidity so if you start hearing us talk about that you know more frequently if you start seeing it appear in twitter threads or in medium posts and things like that um you can always come back to this presentation and just you know, consider this pattern where um, you've got a, an, you know, a bonding curve on the left side, which is selling off US dollars, and then a different bonding curve on the other side where there's the euros that the, the, those US dollars were used to purchase are appearing. What I should point out here is that while the change in the balance on the US dollar side is causing a price change to occur on its bonding curve, the increase in the euros um, on its own bonding curve does not cause the price to change. Um, and this is because we, um, we make sure that the, um, the, the price targets that the trader has chosen are honored no matter what happens. So there is a variable that we have called the y-intercept. And in this case, um, because the, the, uh, the order was previously empty, all we've had to do is to update it from zero to 1,846 and change. Um, and this means that the um, the specific price ranges nominated by the trader um, will remain constant. They, they are unchanging, which is a, a very helpful um, uh, a very helpful um, feature. Okay. Um, now, if we go to um, slide 27, um, all I've done here, I think, is um, is clean stuff up a little bit. Um, and so this is the sort of the final state of the of the strategy, um, you know, b before we enter into the next leg of the process. So slides 28 and 29 are just to remind us of where we are. So we've completed this first run down, right, um, to um, to 1.1025 US dollars per euro. Now, on slide 29, um, we're going to complete this next leg, right? The, the run down to 1.099. On slide 30, right, it's just, a, again, a snapshot of the, the state of the system as it currently stands before the, tr the first trade um, is executed. And on slide 31, um, you can see just how much is changing now. Um, so this is a, a slightly bigger price change. It's about, you know, 0 0.003 cents um, per euro. Um, and this order is now about halfway through its liquidity. Um, so uh, at this point, the, the order is going to sell off a, a further 2,806 US dollars. Um, and that is going to drive the, the price quote on its own bonding curve to 1.0995. And if we go to slide 32, you can see again where those euros are ending up. So these 2,000 odd US dollars that are being sold are being sold for 2,549 euros, but those euros end up on its own bonding curve. And again, the, um, the price quote for this bonding curve, which is currently 0 0.90521 euros per US dollar, um, has not changed, right? Because we're still um, continuing to respect um, the, the trader's decision to not sell at um, a price um, uh, below this. Again, uh, different behavior to compared to other AMMs. Slide 33. Um, is again just a summary of what's happened um, during this transaction. So 
2,806 US dollars were sold, 2,549 uh, euros were, were bought. And you can see in the, the bottom price charts um, how these, um, the, these uh, narrow um, horizontal lines are, are cutting the, the, the bold line, um, which represents exactly where the, the order currently stands with respect to its price quote. On uh, slide 34, again, we're just being reminding ourselves where we are. We've just completed this um, this B capitulation, um, and then slide 35 um, is going to just move the the, the red coloring to the, the this larger um, uh, this larger arrow all the way to the downside, where we actually hit um, the um, the, uh, the the price target uh, nominated by Stephen Hart. Okay, slide 36, again, just reminding us that the, um, the state of the system looks like this. Um, and then on slide 37, we can see that um, because we hit the price target, this US dollar um, order is going to sell off the remaining 5,155 US dollars that it has. And this brings the, um, the price right up to, or the marginal price, right up to the edge of the the user's chosen range so if you um uh if you're 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 watching this and you um you, you feel so compelled um you, if you go back to um where we began this presentation you'll find that this number the 1.09400 us dollars per euro um is actually um the uh the low target um that the the trader has chosen and because we've hit it we've run out of us dollars which is just you know one of the the the, the things that concentrated liquidity does it's neither um, a good or a bad thing it's just a, a a property of concentrated liquidity and you know I guess wielded well um, you can make the claim that it's a a, a a path to better capital efficiency and if that is wielded well a path to better profitability if we go to slide 38. You can see that um, the uh, just because we've depleted the US dollars balance doesn't mean that the strategy is without capital. The euros order um, is now flush, right? The um, overall um, the uh, the strategy has managed to purchase four thousand seven hundred and one euros to the downside um, while maintaining um, the the nominated price um, of the trader. Slide 39 um, is again just uh, cleaning some stuff up, and you know, um, you know, I, I did this again because the, this presentation is actually animated. Um, but when you know, clicking through it this way on, on Discord, I guess is is not as helpful. Okay, so slide 40 is going to show us that we've completed this run to the downside, right? We've, we've hit this, um, this, this low target price. We've exchanged, um, a whole bunch of USD, a whole bunch of USD. So 10,000 USD total, um, for, um, you know, a, a bunch of, um, of, of, of euros. And then on slide 41, um, we're now going to have a look at how the, um, the price moved when it was moving to the upside. So, um, you know, again, this is kind of arbitrary. It's just a, you know, a, a presentation choice. If you really want to, you can go into like the nitty gritty here. I'm just kind of showing you how, how carbon operates. Um, but I treated this as essentially sort of two thrusts. Um, you've got this, uh, this initial thrust, this kind of breakout movement, um, when the price reached this, um, this first threshold, um, inside of, um, inside of the price range. And then there's a little sort of wick at the end, um, that, that took it, um, all the way to the target. And so I'm treating this again as a, as a filled order, um, just cause it makes, um, makes the presentation a little bit cleaner. Um, but it is worth pointing out here that because of these kind of like wicking behaviors, um, you know, it, what this generally means is that there wasn't a huge amount of, um, of activity at that range. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that, but it, it can suggest that. So if there was very little volume at that price, um, then it means that you, you know, you run the risk of not being taken at that price. Um, and so, you know, if someone, you know, who really knows their, their price charts and understands, um, liquidity problems and, um, you know, and, and how volume and demand kind of scale with each other and wanted to argue that, you know, I'm claiming that this wick means that that order would have been filled. 
I know that I'm oversimplifying it, but I think for the sake of, of um, the presentation that it's a, a good enough assumption to make and maybe one day we can um, have a, a, another um, uh, another presentation dedicated to um, how volume and um, the, the likelihood of having your order taken um, scale with each other and we can do that kind of analysis later, but I don't think it's really appropriate to, to, to open it up for discussion here. Um, so slide 42, um, all I've done is um, take those prices and again, invert them into their um, into the other numera um, so that we can understand them better in the, um, in the, the, the carbon native um, bonding and price curves. Slide 43 is a, a bit redundant, which is just showing that we're going to be doing this, um, this first leg first, which kind of makes sense. Slide 44 is, again, the snapshot of the system. We've got a completely empty um, US dollar order, but it kind of, it has a memory of, um, of where it came from. So the Y-intercept is still set at 10,000, um, but the, the, the price is still sitting at the edge of the user's range and it's got no, no liquidity in it. Um, our euros though are flush, right? We've got about 9,000 of those and um, we're, uh, we're currently sitting at the, um, again, the, the very, very edge of the, the user's price range. But as the price action broke into it, then this is where traders are gonna start actively taking the prices on offer. On slide 45, um, we're going to start doing things in the, the reverse direction to how we've been doing them up until now because we're now trading first against the euro order um, and then um, selling these euros off to buy US dollars, which will appear in the US dollar order. So at this particular price, um, we're going to be selling 7,028 euros. Um, and this is, again, this is only a very small change, right? This is a, a change in the, the euro price compared to the... Um, the user's um, threshold of only 0 0.003, right? So it's a very, very small, very non-volatile move. Um, but carbon is sensitive enough to detect that and um, and can easily trade, or you know, or market participants can easily trade even that level of low volatility. So the price is moving down to 0 0.90213 euros per dollar, and um, if we go to slide 46, you will see that this has resulted in the purchase of 7777.6 uh, US dollars. Um, and those US dollars are, again, they're appearing back in the order from whence they came. Um, and that is associated here with a price shift um, of plus 0 0.0083 US dollars per euro. So it should be noted that these are not the inverse of each other. Right, the, the price change that we're getting on the US dollar curve is not the same as the price change that we're getting on the euro curve. And again, this is, a, um, uh, this is not a mistake. This is a, a function of the asymmetry design um, and uh, you know, allows these kinds of strategies to be, um, to be executed without having to worry about um, you know, the, the market retracing and un undoing all of the, the hard work that has already been won. We go to slide 47. This is again just cleaning up, um, so you can see. You know, the the, the main focus of this slide um, in general is just to show that when we're losing tokens or currency or assets from from one curve, that it's the other curve that is gaining its innate currency. Right. This is really the the most important function of this slide. Okay. If we go to 48. Um, Again, this is uh, just a, a reminder of where we just came from. So we approached this um, this price target for D, um, and now we're going to complete the order um, by letting the uh, by assuming that the price runs all the way up to, to E and um, hits the the final price target um, predicted by this this forex trader. Um, so Glenn, that's on slide forty nine, but that's fine. We can go all the way to slide fifty. So here, um, again, this is just the, the snapshot. And then 51 is where we actually start um, doing some, some trades. So here we are, um, there is uh, the, the remaining um, 2,068 euros that were left in this order following the last trade are now being sold off. Right, and this is uh, again. It's a very, very small price change. Only uh, 0 0.0009 euros per dollar. 
So it's a fairly, fairly, you know, small amount of volatility. Um, but, you know, a trader may, um, may identify this as a, you know, as an opportunity or, you know, may just be wishing to, um, you know, to, to purchase euros at, at this rate. Um, and so the, you know, you can take this order, even though it seems, you know, even though it seems like an insignificant change, I assure you it's not, especially with the, the size of the orders that you can, um, you often get um, presented within in Forex. Slide 52, um, and this is the important thing, you'll see now that we've actually um, moved beyond the original threshold um, of um, the, the US dollar order. So this whole round trip, these fractions of a cent um, changes um, have actually resulted in a, a net um, benefit of $70. Right. And that's, you know, just consider that for a second, right? Where this volatile move, right? This, this price chart is measured in fractions of a cent, right? Very, very, very small changes. Um, and over a couple of days, right? The, with hardly any risk in here because the, you know, the US dollar and the euro just aren't that volatile compared to each other. Um, you know, a, a $10,000 unleveraged position was still able to garner, um, you know, 70 bucks in, uh, you know, in, in profits, which I think is around, you know, this is part of the cost in, in Forex. Um, so the, the euros um, have been completely depleted. And we, if we move to um, slide 53, you can kind of see the snapshot at the end of this, um, at the end of this system. So the euros is now back to zero, which is essentially how the, um, how the system started. And the US dollars is now flush um, back up to the top and um, back quoting the same price that the user originally nominated at their range. So Carbon has only ever traded within the ranges that, um, that you know, this YouTube channel, this, this particular video had nominated. Um, and, you know, or, or everything after the initial order creation is automatic, which I think is, is pretty, pretty neat. So um, yeah, this is essentially the this this is the summary, um, uh, and you know the I, I guess the first time that many of you would have had the opportunity to um, to really engage with what Carbon is doing at the um, at a at the fine level. So yeah, thank you for your time, and uh, I guess I'm happy to accept questions, Jen. If, if we I think we've got plenty of time. Sure. If anybody has questions, please put your hands up. I'm thinking that they might or maybe watch it again, but it was a fantastic presentation. I can really appreciate you like putting the time and effort into creating that for us. Yeah, my pleasure. I think one of the, um, like, one, uh, you know, if we don't get any questions, I think that's fine. You know, it is, it is tedious and also like a lot to take in. Um, if anyone wants a copy of this presentation, um, or, you know, I can even send you the Excel spreadsheet that I used to calculate some of these, um, you know, uh, calculate some of these outcomes. If you want any of that material, I just reach out to Jen and, um, and I can make sure that, um, that she delivers that, that material to you. Yeah. And for anybody who's watching this on youtube because we're posting it to youtube after this to reach out to me um the easiest way to do it is probably just jen's telegram is the way to find me on telegram and then here with the number two defi d-e-f-i on twitter 